Let's look at a little bit more complicated molecule. This is a molecule called formaldehyde. And here is the Lewis dot structure of formaldehyde. We've seen this before in another video. What's different about formaldehyde is it contains this double bond. So formaldehyde contains multiple sigma bonds. This, there's a CH sigma bond, and that CH is a sigma bond. And this one of these two, uh, two bonds between carbon and oxygen, one is a sigma, and the other, the second, is a pi bond. That's the uh, Greek letter pi. And that's really what I want to focus on. Um, you know, real quickly, let's look at this, uh, this CH bond, uh, the sigma bond. You know, energetically, we would talk about, well, this is made somehow from an orbital from hydrogen and an orbital from carbon. And, uh, of course, this carbon is sp2 hybridized. So we're going to use one of these sp2 hybrids on carbon. That's an, an atomic orbital on carbon. And then H would use its uh, 1s orbital. Um, I'm showing these at roughly the same energy. That's probably not very accurate, but it's good enough for this crude picture. But this is going to make a typical sigma bond that we've seen before. The hydrogen is going to bring an electron. The carbon is going to bring an electron. These two orbitals are going to uh, mix together. And we'll go from having two atomic orbitals to two new molecular orbitals. And one is a sigma, and the other is a sigma star, and the two electrons will go to the lower energy orbital, and we get this bonding interaction. So that's how the sigma bonds work in this uh, structure for formaldehyde. How about the pi bonds? Well, this carbon is sp2 hybridized, meaning when we hybridized it, it's sp2, so let's circle um, s and two p's, and we'll get, whoops, three sp2 hybrids plus a leftover p orbital. And the oxygen also has a p orbital. And those are the orbitals we're going to use to make our new pi bond. So we have a p orbital um, on carbon. That p orbital is an orbital. It's a line just like all of our other lines in these energy diagrams. Uh, happens to be a p orbital and it has a single electron. Oxygen, I'm going to draw its orbital a little bit lower. It's also going to have a p orbital. And um, these two p orbitals can overlap to make a pi bond. So p orbitals make pi bonds. It's a, there's no coincidence that the letter p is involved in both of those. And so as always, we take our two orbitals. We're going to have them interact. And our two atomic orbitals, p orbitals, will now form two new molecular orbitals. And these are pi bonds. So the pi is the bonding orbital, and just like we saw sigma star, pi star is going to be the antibonding orbital. We have two electrons in the atomic orbitals, so we fill our molecular orbitals with those two electrons. Lowest energy first, and you can see these electrons, they, they go down in energy. This is again an energy axis. And so those electrons go down in energy, and therefore this is a stable interaction. We're forming this covalent carbon oxygen pi bond. What does this orbital look like? Well, we have a carbon, which has a p orbital. Uh, p orbitals have a node in them. So actually, the mathematical sign of the orbital changes as you go through the nucleus. So the carbon and oxygen uh, p orbitals come together. Uh, I'm just going to show the, the, the pi bond. But we're going to add these two orbitals together, and as they come together in space, they begin to overlap in between. And so here's our carbon. There's our oxygen. The label's tiny there. And what we get is kind of, well, I didn't draw this very well, but you sort of get, I didn't draw it very well at all, but you get uh, overlap in between the, nu the, the carbon oxygen nuclei. And as you can see, where we've shown the lobes of this uh, CO pi bond, this is, and this is our pi bond, those lobes fall mostly in between the two nuclei. So those electrons, they get to, they're close to both nuclei, they are low in energy, and that's reflected in this energy diagram. Um, this looks like a lot of stuff in this orbital, but that is one orbital. 
We took two atomic orbitals and we made two new molecular orbitals, the pi, and that itself is a single orbital. It's got a lot of parts, but it's just one full orbital. And then there's also a pi star, which, which I haven't shown. So that's a bond. That's a bonding picture for a pi bond, and it really energetically, it's much like a sigma bond. The uh, orbital pictures are a little bit different, but it's the same idea. If for a bonding interaction, we want to generate orbitals um, in which the uh, electrons can occupy the the region between the two nuclei, and that's what we see in a pi bonding orbital.